Our Nigeria soldiers, where they die for Niger State, when they ambush, they can't kill them. They don't finally lay them to rest. I pray, may their soul make it rest in peace. The thing touched me when I see their family members. They pour sand for their grave. It's heartbreaking. I don't know how they want to face that country. But my people, this is really heartbreaking. Well, we could go straight to our news we'll get today. Tinubu don't use ante beat the chest. He don't talk, say, I think could not feel use the Chicago University record against them for the Nigeria election tribunal. Say, in time, say, don't too late for him. Yeah, hey, my people, politics. Ah! Now, sorry, no, come a run him out. Say, in go that Chicago University, say, Bola Tinubu was a student. Say he did there when they admit him. He did there when he goes school. He did there when he writes his arm. He even did there when he graduates. He even did there when he even wear a graduation uniform. Hey. Inside the same matter, now he constantly come out, come they brag, they talk, say, now in the old echo was where they never say invade me jay say now nah, him now nah, they inside we be saying they delay the whole thing if not therefore don't invade me jay that means echo was for don't invade me jay ha or oh, gajagaband hey and this one i can't make them the echo has come all meeting they can't talk say well say that they in full support of the citizens of Niger because now they are brothers now they be however any decision where they make now for their own interest to reinstate constitutional orders my people so many policies they play in here if you begin the talk you know go finish you so that one can't say bono fuao. Now so come come this very news over the world. So we consign a papa lami the gang. Now so this people come come out so they can't talk say make the press make the journalists not they give them listening ear again. Say they are losers. Say they just want you know a uh, ruin Peter Obi chance of becoming president. They want jeopardize everything. Say they don't give them the final warning. Say me they stop all this their gang thing where they do against Peter Obi and Labour Party. This one and many many Tory we food this video. I bet Mona watch them from the beginning to the end is well packaged round there for Una my people. This channel na B O D T V board they will they analyze all the trends where they happen. Make you not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Wakoyo, Brano, I put it to you again, and I would like to give you an open challenge about your visit to Chicago, and Chicago told you that they had all the records. I would challenge you openly on that, and this is why I would challenge you. At first, you said that I didn't, that uh, the subpoenas were for Deloitte, were not for Chicago University. Reno, you were wrong. In the court papers, in case you don't have access to it, the court papers by Enahoro Eba that was filed Recently, he, sub he told his colleague, Mr. Matthew J. Quals, a Chicago-based lawyer, who issued an attorney subpoena on his behalf against the Chicago State University in case number 22L007289 on the 12th of August. Quals had in his subpoena directed the school to mail all the documents and records in possession that pertains to Tinubu and his educational qualifications. And it is based on that. In the suits, uh, what's it called? And now we told the court that copies of from Chicago State Academic Record undergraduate and were letters sent to him, which were attached to him as a court exhibit. And it contradicts the material provided by Tinubu in EC9 forms of to INEC. So that's also prove you wrong. In case you do not know, Reno, there was actually a subpoena to Chicago based on the deposition of this legal paper. You can go and read the vanguard of the 16th of November for that. It's not only the Deloitte that was subpoenaed. It was subpoenaed for Chicago, and this is based on that. That's why I challenge, what did Chicago University tell you, Reno, when you went there? Who did you meet? Who did you talk to? What papers did they give you? When you make a claim in court, it just remains that a claim it is only the judge, you know, because we don't have jury system, it's jury system in Nigeria. It's only the judge that can now make your claim valid. But I'm telling you for a fact that this man went to Chicago State University. And listen, I'm a member of the People's Democratic Party. I do not want Bolatinibu to win. It will be in my interest to join this bad wagon and begin to slander the man and to now libel him and to say he never went there. I went there. The man attended Chicago State University. I met Tinubu on Thursday. He said a clerical error. 
is responsible for discrepancies on the certificate issued to him by the Chicago State University. Well, according to Tinubu's lawyers, an unidentified clerk of the university made the error about the date the school stated on his recently issued certificate. Tinubu's lawyers argued that the university incorrectly wrote the date of graduation as June 27th, 1979, instead of June 22nd, 1979, along with a change in the university's logo, which created the appearance of differences between an earlier issued diploma and the one issued in response to a 2022 subpoena. The claim is in their response to a suit filed by former Vice President Atiku Abubaka seeking the disclosure of Tinubu's academic records from the university. Well, users on social media have shared mixed reactions. Before I take tweets, Rufai, mm. you know, I'd love for you to just chime in here because you know that this issue of whether certificates forgery has been, you know, on the forefront of all eyes on the judiciary. No, but we just have to state clearly that anything happening in American courts is of no consequence mm -hmm. to what the judiciary has reserved a date for already. This is separate mm -hmm. from it. But there's been many conversations around this Chicago debacle. And many cases have been filed. Mm -hmm. And many subpoenas have been issued, all right, as regards this. And some actors somewhere have orchestrated also many lies. One of them, I think we had to talk about this around November last year, was that we brought to fore that there had been a case filed as regards this conundrum of certificates mm. at the court in Abuja, I think it was the Federal High Court or something, I don't know the jurisdiction of the court now, where Enahuru Eba, a lawyer said that he had instructed his partner, Knowles, in Chicago to subpoena Chicago to get details of, you know, degrees and all of that, and school records and all of that. And he said this was at variance with what the president, you know, now yeah. sent to INEC then. Right. There's that conundrum. And I think we talked emphatically as regards this. That was what happened then. Now, Alaji Atiku Abubaka in America also using the court system to be able to know more. And in fact, I think for the sake of clarification, you know, somebody had claimed that they even went to Chicago. <laughs> and I know that somebody, somebody. <laughs> the point I made yes. was the person claimed they went to Chicago on the 19th hmm. of September. That was the day they visited Chicago. But why is it that the document the person claimed Chicago gave them was unsigned and it was dated in June. So there's been a lot of conundrum. And I would like the courts to be able to unpack it. But Alaji Atiku Abaka has filed in America. Mm -hmm. And the response of the Tinubu team now is the fact that there was a clerical error as regards date of graduation and the likes and all of that. Whatever it is, this matter is sub judice and the court will rule. What I just gave is a hitherto background. I will not talk about the matter that is sub judice. Right. All right. But there's been a lot of back and forth and confusion as regards this. So let's see how this court process pans out. The deposition and the reportage is all there for all to read. Right. Pure and simple. Well, you know that the United States had given a Tinubu until August 23rd. That is what, two days ago? Yeah. To, you know, give reasons as to why his records should not be released to the former vice president. But, you know, before I come to you, let me take some tweets. This is from Spotlight wrote, uh, Chicago State University had the opportunity to proactively issue an official statement to disassociate itself from the narco runner and lay out whatever went wrong with its internal admission processes over 45 years ago, but they preferred to cover it up and hope to the stench would go away. This is certainly how not to handle a crisis, PR 101. Everyone knows that a lot of people traveled and worked with other people's identities back then because of absence of biometrics ETC. So there is no way they haven't reviewed this case over and over and identified what went wrong since Nigerians started pursuing this matter. Over to you, Ayo. Yeah, I mean, um, as 
has been mentioned already, it's, this matter has come up a number of times. And um, in the last election, it tried to, you know, some people try to bring it up again, especially Absolutely. from the opposition. And it is important, even though it has no bearing on the judgment that's reserved by, you know, that's in court currently mm -hmm. in terms of the presidential election um, petition tribunal. I think it's important for Nigerians to know the truth, mm -hmm. even if it's just for, to put it on the record. And then Chicago, one thing about the United States of America is that they, they will uphold the rule of law. And so even though Chicago State University hitherto had not wanted to and had given a post-dated um, date to release the details of, um, of, of, um, you know, of, of the school records, by the act of law, the former, um, vice president, former Vice President Atuku has been able to um, place a demand for them to release it. So the onus would be on them then to see if they are going to do so or not. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, even though, as has been established, it has no bearing on the judgment, it is important for Nigerians to know the truth. And let's put to pay, let's put pay to this conversation around, oh, where's your background? What school did Absolutely. you attend? What school didn't you attend? I think we just, let's just have closure, you know, as a people. I think that's all that I would say about Panatu that. Panatu Musawa, the Minister of Art and Culture and Creative Economy, has been confirmed as a seven member of the Youth Corps. NYSC confirmed that yesterday. The report follows a claim by the Human Rights Association of Nigeria, a civil society organization that Musanwa is undertaking the one-year mandatory youth service scheme while she is still a member of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's cabinet. Kayode, your right. name just came off my head. <laughs> but the point, we discussed them, Hanatu, yesterday. Yes. And unfortunately, she has come under fire because of this whole situation. And I know that the President Tinubu's cabinet had inaugurated a team for NYSC. And it's unfortunate that, you know, she's still a serving member, member. of I, NYSC and she's been confirmed as a minister. You, did you, what did you say? I said I should Google her age. Oh, no, she had started. I mean, it's not about the yeah. age, actually, no, at this but point. I thought no. age is a factor in NYSC. No, when you graduate before you are 30. Before you are 30. Yes. If you graduate after you are 30, then you get exemptions. Before absolutely, you're absolutely. So, even if you graduate before you are 30, you can do it any other time. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So, I think for how yeah, she... That's like Kemi's case. No, not Kemi's case. Kemi no, the has was forged. Was that's it? the, it's not forged. It's just the case of if you're not... Uh, if you don't have the certificate, you cannot serve, so... Okay. I was just going to say Go that ahead, I really I, uh, want the women on this cabinet to do well. Yes. Because already we didn't even meet the quota of 35% that the president had promised us. But, you know, nevertheless, it is important that this controversy had come um, during the Buhari um, administration when she was, for the same reason of the NYSC, mm. she, wasn't, um, she wasn't allowed to go through by the House, mm. uh, by, the, by, the, by the Senate. And unfortunately, again, it's becoming a cha it's, it has come up again. It will now come to um, bear whether the president would say that she's serving, um, they've redeployed her to ministerial office to serve her out her um, you know, youth corps. I don't know if that is even legal, mm. you know, or um, post that, but yeah. again, I hope it will be resolved. I, yeah. hope, I wish I would. And you know, this whole um, situation with the unemployment rate, she also um, posted a tweet about that and she came under fire. She wrote, um, breaking unemployment rate drops to 4.1%. Nigeria <laughs> is moving forward. I mean, we, this is just a ridiculous situation because as you know, like we have discussed it, what is the reason for this drop? As yesterday, the National Bureau of Statistics said that there, you know, there's been that sharp drop on unemployment. Uh, you know, they said that the figures are based on the new methodology of labor force survey undertaken in collaboration with the World Bank, an international labor organization. Let me just take one tweet. Um, this is from, uh, this is an anonymous tweet. This person says, the biggest fraud and the most dangerous in leadership or management is to deliberately produce wrong data or information. The result is a short disaster. Someone has BP of 190 <laughs> over 140, but tells the doctor, my BP is 120 over 80. Who will die? Another Twitter user, um, Atedo Peterside, also wrote, according to StatiSense, South Africa's unemployment rate is 32.6%. We in Nigeria have brought ours down to 4.1%. The only catch is that we brought unemployment crashing down because NBS Nigeria changed methodology of unemployment. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Rufai, I don't know whether I should laugh or cry. Well, all right. 
Tinubu, while speaking to religious clerics who are helping negotiate with the Nigerian military, said, I am managing a serious situation. If you take ECOWAS aside, other people will react. Those who are outside of our control, I am the one holding those sides back. I am the one holding back ECOWAS. He also said that he cannot delay the military intervention indefinitely. Therefore, they must hasten whatever negotiations with the Nigerian military. He wasn't specific about the other people in his statement, but since they are outside ECOWAS, it can only be France and the United States. This is an open confession, not that it was secret anyway. Since the military struck in Niger in late July, Tinubu has always maintained that they must leave power immediately. In fact, he has made many threats to the military regime in Niger that they must vacate power or risk a military intervention. Going by his statement that he is the one that is holding back ECOWAS leaders from invading Niger from taking that decision, it is a direct acceptance that he controls them, that he can decide the direction of the ECOWAS leaders. We've made analysis of this in the past, that going by Nigeria's position in ECOWAS, they can influence the decision of ECOWAS leaders. In other words, if Tinubu could hold the ECOWAS leaders, it means he can stop the invasion permanently. No need to waste unnecessary energy in another man's country. All the flights from Abuja to Niamey all the time, who is paying for it? Is it not better to spend all that money and energy in your own country? After all, Nigeria is supposed to come first before another country. Even all the countries interested in Niger today, the United States, France, they are all fighting for their own country. United States invested more than $100 million in a military base in Niger. Their interest is to protect the investment of U.S. taxpayers and also hold on to their ability to gather information. Also, France. France is fighting hard to retain their control over Niger. So, who is the control going to benefit? French people in faraway Europe. So, why is Nigeria different? Because we do not have anything to gain from Niger Republic. In fact, the reverse is the case. Niger Republic benefits from Nigeria's legacy more than we do from them. And before anyone says, hey, be your brother's keeper, were you invited? Nigerians are even protesting and saying, hey, leave us alone, let us solve our problems ourselves, so we'll find a solution. Anyway, since it seems like he doesn't see the problems in Nigeria, he's always seeing the ones outside Nigeria in faraway Niger. Let's enumerate some of the problems we have in Nigeria that need solving. Because naturally, you have to solve your own problems first before going to the outside, before trying to help someone else that is far away from you. So let's start from solving our problems at, at home. At first, they snubbed our diplomatic efforts, but recently began to show signs of being amenable, only for them to take a path which we consider to be dangerous by putting in place a government and declaring a transition timetable which is unacceptable to ECOWAS. Distinguished members of the press, let me reiterate that the decision of the ECOWAS authority of heads of state and government, which is currently chaired by His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the President of the Republic of Nigeria, is to work for the peaceful restoration of civilian rule in the Republic of Niger without any delay, and to use all the instruments at the disposal of ECOWAS towards the attainment of this goal. As for the other countries in transition, namely Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea, ECOWAS will continue to support their transition process as directed by the ECOWAS authority of heads of state and government. We will continue to support their fight against terrorism to ensure the restoration of democracy, peace, and security in our community. We will also continue to work with them on the agreed transition timetables. Ladies and gentlemen, May I once again thank you all for honoring our invitation, and I hope that you will continue to remain our partners in progress as we navigate these difficult times 
in our room. Manipulate the court. All because of what they want to do or what they want to achieve. You can imagine the lack, the height of lack of integrity in them, which is a paradox to our core value as Africans. The value of integrity, honesty, dedication, loyalty. And these are the qualities that you must find in leaders who are going to govern you. Once these things are not there, then you can imagine the type of nation we are driving. And that is what the Labour Party has come to change. I said it somewhere recently that the Labour Party is self forging Those of us who are seated at the NWC, we have also been very careful to continue to portray the legacy, the core value, the principle, the ideology that surrounds the Labour Party, which is social democracy. So please, members of the press, we will crave your indulgence, we will appeal to you not to pay attention to these guys. That is the cross of this. The more you pay attention to them, the more you are dragging the country backward. As you know, the growth and development of the country has been put in reverse gear for more than eight years. And we are all suffering it now. There's the need for us to work together for the Labour Party to emerge so that uh, the social democracy, the welfare of Nigerian people, the consideration of development, the economic uh, uh, development, I mean growth and development, that is the basis for the Labour Party, we now come to manifest. So we need to appeal to you, we are appealing to you, that you should stop giving these people attention. The more you give them attention, the more we continue to drive ourselves backward. Thank you very much. Papa was never the deputy national chairman of the Labour Party. So even in the absence of the national chairman, Papa has no authority to act for, for, as the national chairman of the Labour Party. The Labour Party's constitution provides for three deputy national chairmen. Akwapa was only a deputy national chairman. And by the constitution of the Labour Party, it is only the National Working Committee of the party that can fill vacancies when they occur. And as to the restraining order, it was only an interim order, which cannot perpetually hang on the neck of any respondent. An interim order is supposed to last the maximum for 14 days. Now, this interim order has been appealed against and it is now a subject of appeal, two appeals before the Court of Appeal, Abuja. And when a matter has been appealed against, and it's before the Court of Appeal, it is the height of judicial rascality for anyone. It is impertinent and insubordination for anyone to say anything that will prejudge a matter that is before the Court of Appeal. And that is why no court has ever done anything or pronounced on it. No court has pronounced Akwapa as acting national chairman. No organ of the party has pronounced Akwapa as acting national chairman. Akwapa is only illegally and unlawfully parading himself as acting national chairman. As no organ of the party. You see, you don't, you don't serve a point in the political party. This is not a jungle. Okay. This is a democratic organization that is guided by the rule of law. You don't serve a point. You don't say, now I'm the acting national chairman. He has no, he don't, does not have that right, and nobody has appointed him. The matter of the Redding order is only a military order that is the subject of appeal. The, the leadership of the party is intact and has no space for a suspended former uh, deputy yes, national chairman. He was uh, only a deputy, not the deputy. That is, the, he has been misleading the public as if he has a right, as if he is the deputy. Part, the position of the party provides for three deputy national chairmen, chairmen. and one of them is sitting with us, Dr. Ayuolo Rupemi, the deputy national chairman of the Labour Party.
distinguished graduate guests, while the tour of the Ashna Flood is humbly, particularly the candidate of his announcement. The first set of presentation will be made by the chief of the Tesla. And the first set of letter B are the letter B to look with the SC on it. Who the best of thing of this disease of sex? Next of king. Mm-hmm. 